seems to me that the special relationship, the so-called special relationship, is no longer quite so special. We're going to talk to Dr James Boyes. He's Professor of International Political Studies. James, good evening. Uh, good evening, Ian. Good to speak to you again. Now, I called John Kerry's speech a game-changer earlier. I don't think that was an exaggeration. Um, what's your view? Well, I was listening to what you were saying and uh, not only nodding along with you, but I tweeted much to the same effect just before you'd said it. So uh, we are of one mind here. Uh, when you listen to uh, Secretary Kerry, one wonders uh, how things might have been different had John Kerry succeeded in replacing George W. Bush in the election of 2004, for example. But more to the point, Ian, I think, here's an important question. Why is that speech being given by the Secretary of State at the State Department and not by President President Obama in the Oval Office leading the American people in the international community because as you rightly point out I think if he had given that address before David Cameron had gone to the House of Commons uh, last night you might well have seen a very very different reaction uh, from backbenchers and from the Labour Party. Well what's your answer to that question why didn't Obama make that speech? You know, I wish I knew, uh, to be quite honest. He should be leading, and he seems to be quite happy uh, to remain vague and ambiguous about what it is the United States are going to do and allow John Kerry and Chuck Hagel to start moving diplomatic pieces and military hardware around the world whilst being vague and unspecific and declaring that he's yet to make his mind up about what he is or isn't going to do. What do you think the timeline will be now? Because normally in these situations, the United States doesn't waste much time. They get on and do it. Now, it could, could, could military action be taken as early as this weekend? I think it could. I think, to be quite honest, that Obama and uh, David Cameron had a tacit agreement uh, that uh, the Prime Minister would go to the House last night with every expectation of getting a green light, and that would allow for allied action to take place against Syria prior to Barack Obama's departure uh, for Stockholm and then the G20 summit. Quite clearly, last night's vote has put some degree of a spanner in the works, but you heard uh, uh, Secretary Kerry speaking there very forcefully, putting America's credibility on the line at this point. It really is uh, getting to a point where rhetorically, politically and militarily, the United States really can't back down. Where does this all leave Britain standing in the world? Because I, c I can imagine there being many people in the Foreign Office and indeed Number 10 tearing their hair out listening to John Kerry today. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, you heard and I'm sure read some of the uh, rather choice language that the the Times were reporting uh, that Number 10 and the Foreign Office were referring to uh, Ed Miliband uh, just 24 hours ago. If uh, And I'm not going to repeat that, quite obviously, uh, but if that's what the British are thinking, you imagine what the Americans are thinking. There's no doubt that this uh, has had a detrimental effect upon the British standing in the world, its relations with the Americans, and for Secretary Kerry to come out and talk about the French being America's oldest ally, which I say is, is technically true if you go back to the early days and the uh, the war of revolution uh, that really says something about uh, how it is and how needled the administration it is about the uh, the vote last night james thank you very much for joining us that's dr james boys professor of international political studies